see. Hi everyone and welcome to our weekly activity challenge with an expert. And this week we have Joanne. Did I say Joanne right? Yep, that's right. Yeah, Joanne is a speech therapist coming all the way from uh, from Cheshire in the UK, so Northwest England. Northwest England, which is so awesome that we can connect with people all over the world right now through this internet. Um, anyway, she's a speech therapist, and her main focus is providing parents with activities to put in speech um, development into everyday activities and, and make it really easy and fun for you. Um, and she's here to share some simple ways we can do that and some awesome activities to support our kids' language development. So Joanne, you want to talk about kind of your five tips and how long you've been a speech therapist? Yeah, so hello everyone. Thank you so much for having me here. It's uh, amazing to be uh, talking on this page and to people all the way over uh, in the US. So I'm Joanne Jones. And I've been a speech therapist for 20 years, um, mainly working for the NHS up until about 18 months ago when I left and started supporting parents online. So I support parents through a membership and through um, a free Facebook page and then mainly parents of preschool children who are not yet talking or who are struggling to get going with their talking right and I, I'm a busy mum of four and so I completely know what it's like when you're trying to fit in extra things like speech therapy mm -hmm. and so I've really tried hard to kind of find ways for parents to kind of slip in speech therapy throughout yeah. the day without having to do anything extra because yeah. at the end of the day learning to communicate is a totally natural process and so if you sit down with some flashcards or a worksheet you've lost that kind of natural element to it so I'm all about harnessing those the, your child's moments and building on them yes. and so um I do lots of things around that but I wanted to think particularly today about play and how we can play with children to enhance their language development and I've got five steps to doing that the first thing is to just stop and watch and see what your child shows an interest in. I think sometimes as parents, we really try and we're kind of, we've got in mind how we want things to go and we're trying to set up these activities and we want to be really, uh, you know, there's Pinterest and there's Instagram and we see all these things. But uh -huh. I just encourage you to just stop for a minute and watch your child and see what they're expressing an interest in. And then when you've done that, and um, I've, it's funny, I've been doing a challenge this week and, and one little boy, you know, he stopped and he saw this flower in the hedgerow and the mum took that moment and then went home and did some games around flowers because she'd seen that spark of interest and he'd spoken a word for the first time. So right. it really works when you kind of watch what they're doing and get that interest. I then encourage people to copy whatever your child does, just copy. And that feels a little bit counterintuitive, particularly when children are not doing the most useful thing. Because sometimes children who are slow at talking find playing difficult as well. Uh -huh. And so, um, but copy whatever it is they do, copy, because that saying, I'm here, I'm with you, and I'm going to, what you're doing is right, and I'm encouraging you, and copying is a really good thing to do. It's like yeah. teaching them copy right and so just copy what they're doing and when you've been doing that for a little while you uh -huh. can add add an idea add something new do something different with that toy that they weren't doing you know if they're playing with a car and um they're you know maybe lining the cars up or they're pushing the car up the ramp get the car and push it off the end of the sofa and make a big crash or put uh -huh. the car in your head or hide the car underneath the towel just do something different add one extra thing to what your child's already interested in yeah and the other thing is number four is to um to not ask any questions so while we're playing not saying what uh -huh. are you doing? what's that, Where's uh -huh. that? Where, where, where are you putting that is it blue or red what color is that how many have you got because that's what we all do we all do that all the time because we yes. know what know and we want them to develop and change and um grow in what they're doing but actually asking questions like that is quite testing uh -huh. and children find that really difficult and so if we're quiet 
and I talk about creating airspace. So if you create an airspace between you that you don't fill as the adult, you just leave it. You leave this gap for them to talk. You'll see their talking comes. And right. so when we do this, we see that children are um, begin to start talking more. And rather than then grasping onto it and asking them another question and asking them something else and trying to keep the conversation going, mm -hmm. just leave the gap, leave right. the gap. And, you know, I talk about something that I call together time, where you have this time to do the five minutes a day where you're just with your child, you're following their lead, you're copying what they're doing. And it's like magic sauce. It really is. It kind of, it helps children to develop. And, you know, it's not just for children who are struggling to learn to talk. It's great for all children. And in fact, I still use it with my teenagers because... <laughs> It kind of gives them the opportunity to come to me and talk rather than um, me going, so what have you done today? And have you done your homework? And what was that? And have you seen your friends? And what did so-and-so say? And are you okay about this? And, just, you know, we ask all these questions, don't we? Yeah. If you sit back and just hold space with them, you'll find that this talking begins to come. And if we really focus on where the child is up to and build up in little tiny steps, you see that progress. And that is where um, parents begin to feel empowered and confident about helping their child. Right. So yeah. when I talk about activities for children, I talk about invitations to play. And what an invitation to play is, is, is some things to kind of um, stimulate their imagination and their curiosity, but with, with leaving my own agenda at the door. So um, I always think of the analogy, I used to own a nursery. And when I first um, had some of the staff in the nursery, they wanted to do activities with the children that produced, um, so the, the example I think of is a daffodil. So they wanted to do a daffodil some of this day I don't really, do you have daffodils in california they're a yellow oh no, we do have daffodils here yes excellent um, so they wanted to send a daffodil picture home for uh -huh. parents and they cut out some egg boxes and they like helped the children to paint them yellow and then they got some stems that they'd already cut out and helped the child to put them on the page in the right place and put the leaves in the right place uh -huh. and everybody left that nursery with the same daffodil Mm -hmm. But the problem with that is it doesn't allow the child to kind of um, express themselves and to explore and to be curious. It's much more about the adult's agenda to get to the end of the daffodil. Right. And so what I changed it into was we had a big bunch of daffodils in the middle of the table and we had some yellow paint and some green paint, some big pieces of paper and just let the children kind of be be inspired by the yellow and green and kind of create something themselves mm -hmm. and that's much better for children's language and independent skills and imagination and development and so um i encourage parents that work with me to kind of create these opportunities to communicate and opportunities to play through um activities that are kind of left around and enable the child to play Right. And in preschool classrooms, I know there's some preschool teachers on here. The best way to do that is to put out objects and then have open ended questions like, oh, what color is that? What are you using that for? Where are you going to put that? Why did you do that? And having those open ended questions embedded in that free play will then give them some new vocabulary words and really get them communicating with their friends and with their teachers and coming up with some of that imagination. So that's really good. Even at home or at school, you can do that. So. And what we know about little children is that they can't listen and look at different things and, and make sense of them. And so when you're giving them something that, that that's um, sparking that interest and curiosity and then you're talking about it, all those neurons in the brain are connecting and it's changing mm -hmm. their kind of brain architecture because they're focused and we're inputting the language. Whereas um, if they're a bit, you know, they're running all over or they're just not interested in it, we don't yeah. get the same learning language learning learning opportunities so things right. that are different and interesting and often natural natural um 
things that we find out and about or real mm. life like one of the things the kids loved in my nursery the best was just a big basket of old-fashioned chunky jewelry right and, you know it was real life jewelry that i've picked up in a charity shop uh -huh. um, but it was there and th th they loved that because it was real and you know it just had that right. different appeal yeah so do you have some activities you wanted to show us today so, uh, I've got three activities that I wanted to show you. Well, kind of, because my children are a bit older now, so we don't have a huge amount of things here. But the first thing was this box. And boxes like this are um, amazing. Oh, where's my camera? Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. Children. And they're a really good bit of kit to have. Because right. it's hidden away from a child, uh -huh. suddenly it comes of more interest. Right. So if you have a child who, for example, um, is just still learning first words you can put in this box objects of first words maybe a spoon and a plate and a car and a little cow and a sponge and things that are in their everyday life and when you create the curiosity of it being in the box and they're yeah. focused and they're interested because they want to know what's in there and they want to pick the next thing out then uh, you know you've got their attention you uh -huh. might have a child who has got difficulties with their speech pronunciation and if they are struggling with the t sound, you could put all objects in here that started with the letter t. So like a tiger and a towel. And they're all the t words in here. And one by one, you can kind of explore them. Right. But I find that anything that's hidden away from little children in a little box becomes much more entertaining. Than yes. it just sound. So everybody yes. needs a box. You can do that really for any sound, right? Just fill it. How yes. many objects would you put in there? So I'd put about, when you first started, I'd maybe have about six and then work it up as the child, um, you know, attention or has got into the game. Uh -huh. um, you uh -huh. can kind of just add more in. Some children will pay attention to this for kind of 12 or 15 objects. Right. Um, so just kind of increasing it with your child's attention yeah. as well. Yeah, that's great. You could also put maybe picture cards in here or, uh -huh. um, you know, and then ask them to go and... Uh, put them you know you could have some pictures of things in the kitchen and then the child's yeah. got to choose one and then go and put it on the picture of the fridge and the picture of the plate on the plate and so they're right. matching right. Right. So there's so many i love that bringing it in and doing some of those matching and that cognitive piece where they're actually matching the pictures to the actual items so that's a great way to encourage some more skills and even make it into more of a game yeah exactly yeah. and that a couple of children it's a great turn-taking game to start with because you can kind of close it and be quite um clear about whose turn it is you know right. it makes it really obvious so children can really kind of yeah. um you know learn from that yeah definitely so did you have more i know that was one i know you had more another one are these all for kids ages two to five ages? Uh, yeah okay yeah absolutely so bubbles oh. you don't get many speech therapists that don't have a pack of bubbles because yes, we love bubbles this is a very um this is one of those packs of bubbles that the bubbles um are they kind of stay you can catch them you know the magic right. bubble but any kind of bubbles and these are really great if you have got a child who's maybe between two and five and they're not interacting very confidently they're the kind of child who likes to play by themselves doesn't really want you to join in we call them here own agenda child they, they right. just kind of follow their own lead not let anybody else in but bubbles are great because there's something magical about a bubble that gets a child's attention and it needs you to blow it so it's a great way to get eye contact to get children asking for more for them to get those early sounds of bubbles with the b and pop as another b sound right it's great for mouth movements because children often struggle with their lips and their mouth movements so getting them to blow and get their lips forward so mm -hmm. there's lots of things that you can do with um with bubbles um to really help children's interaction and communication right right and even just that sensory component of bubbles is really good when you so if you do bubbles can you do something like that even like in a sensory table like if you had a big table full of soap and water if i didn't have bubbles 
what are ways that I can put some language into that? Do I just add things or do I talk about descriptive words or how would I do that at home? I think it depends on where your child was up to. So if you wanted your child just to be interacting and maybe asking for more and noticing that you're part of the game, mm -hmm. I would have um, maybe a tray with some bubbles in and some different ones that you could hold. Um, and you would hold the ones and maybe they could choose which one they wanted. And right. then um, when the bubbles have gone, I would wait and see whether they requested that they wanted more. So maybe they would look at me or they might um, kind of show me somehow that they wanted to keep going. If it was a child who had first words, I'd be adding words like um, colour words and up and pop mm -hmm. and stop and go. Yeah. And all those kind of early words that go with it. Right. And if it was a child who was putting phrases together, I'd start talking about mixing up the bubbles and what do we need and what should we do next and kind of expanding their thinking around the bubble mixture. Right, right. That's great. So bubble mixture. Um, so do you have an idea of what you would put in to make the bubbles? Would you just soap and water? Would you add something else? So I just use um, fairy liquid. We call it a washing up liquid. Yeah. Um, so just mixing that with it needs to be quite a strong mix. Um, uh, you know if it's too weak the bubbles just don't hold and the other top tip is if your child is putting the one to their mouth right. and then put one back in the the enzymes in your mouth start to break down the bubble mixture and they don't doesn't work anymore oh, so you know yes. those children that like to suck the end of the the bubble yes. one and it yes. breaks it down and stops it from working so yes. maybe okay. having a few bubble ones that you can use right um and the other good thing is using a bar of soap um, uh -huh. and getting your hands wet and really lathering up the soap and you can create a bubble through your hand and children love that in the bath. Oh, how fun. You make your hands really soapy, dip them in, get them really wet and then blow some bubbles. Oh, but how fun. Um, okay, do you want to do the third activity? I know. Yeah, so the third one... Um, is oh I've got a few to choose from one second um so verbs are often difficult for children to understand so yeah. I have always used a teddy or like this little rabbit to help use um to help teach them verbs so when children start learning language they often learn lots of nouns lots of um object words and maybe names of people but verbs right. take a little bit longer uh -huh. So um, I'm not a very good singer, but children don't mind whether you're very good at singing or not. <laughs> um, but I'm not sure about singing on a live. But I know well, you know. Go ahead. We're fine with it. Yeah. Um, but I kind of make up songs as I go along. So um, we make up a song about um, rabbit, rabbit. Can you jump? Can you jump? Can you jump? Yes. Rabbit, rabbit. Can you jump? And then rabbit, rabbit. Can you clap? Can you clap? Uh -huh. So you're teaching the verb through that the little animal, and children right. love it. And they can have one, and you can have one, and you can be doing uh -huh. dancing, kissing, mm -hmm. hugging, clapping, hopping, yeah. all these verbs with this teddy. And right. because you're singing it, that helps the children to remember it, and it really helps with those learning of early verbs. It does. It does. Yeah, and like you said, like you kind of start with that naming an object and then naming people and then when a child is trying to move into those two or three word phrases or those sentences you have to add those verbs in they have to say i am walking or i walked or running and that's a mm -hmm. great way through play to to do that i can even see that being like a circle time game in a preschool class yeah, I used to do that with my activity Mm -hmm. um, and having the teacher have the thing and then have, you know, two or three kids up there with them imitating. Yeah, they love it. They like, love it. Yeah, because we're always learning new words. And I don't know if you know the total word count and jump, but I know that, like, from the time they're two to the time they're three, the amount of words that they know increases in uh, by a lot, a couple hundred or a thousand words. You know? Yeah, I think we've got um, a project running in the UK, which is called the Million Word Gap. 
and they think that by the age of five, children who are in very language rich homes uh -huh. are a million more different words than children in homes where there's not so much language going on. Wow. And so we, we've got a project that is trying to bridge that gap to help those children that aren't exposed to language. So yeah, children just need to be kind of exposed. Mm, that just shows, that just proves how important it is that we sit down, even if it's for 10 or 15 minutes, at a time and just talk to our kids and play with them because a million more words that is significant massive isn't it it's yeah massive. and that will definitely support them in kindergarten and ongoing when they're trying to communicate and follow instructions and understand words yeah, so, yeah. And as, as moms in in the 21st century we've got a a, a big difficulty and that is our phones because our phones um demand a lot of attention from us mm -hmm. and um you know whether it's your, your email pinging or a note some kind of notification or it's ringing or an alarm or whatever or scrolling through social media and it brings our attention away from children and children know that you know they, they're sensitive to that and so i really encourage people who work with me to have at least you know 10 minutes a day where your phone is not even in the same room as you you. yeah and it's hard i mean i it's hard i know it's hard you know we all you know, struggle yeah. with that but it just pays dividends for children and i think Definitely. if we can we should, we should we should try well thank you for coming on i appreciate you giving us your time and all your expertise and over 20 years of experience as a speech therapist that's awesome um so i'm going to put a link up to your website so if anybody wants to go over to your facebook page um and learn more about what you do and get some tips and um, then you can definitely do that and i'll put that below brilliant thank so, you so much thank you for coming on i appreciate it bye bye thank bye -bye. you bye.